It's no secret that bass love bluegills and other sunfish. This pattern's meant to imitate the many hybrid bluegill and sunfish that you find all over the place. It has a great profile and has a little kick action on the paws and strip. Here's how we tie it. So here are two colors in Rico Puglisi fibers. We're going to be pulling quite a few sections from these two clumps. Pull one long and relatively thin piece from the olive colored clump. Now keep in mind this is how I tie this specific pattern. I'll change things for different patterns. After the first clump, pull three more very thin pieces off and cut them in the middle. We'll have three main ties. High ties, low ties, and mid ties. Remember that. We'll be cutting these six down the middle and this is what you'll have before you start tying. When you're done, you should have one long piece, six thin pieces for the mid ties, and five olive colored pieces and one tan piece for the high and low ties. I begin by making a full thread base with UTC 140. This is because I use GSP for most of the pattern and it's a bit slick. Just work the thread down the shank and then once you get to the top again, just tie it off. After this, attach your GSP and tie it down to the back of the hook. After you've completed this, we're going to tie in our long piece, which you should grab now. This is more or less our high tie, but it's a tad bit different. You position the fiber on top of the shank and make a few wraps. Tie back with only a few wraps and then pull the other fiber back. Wrap some thread over this section and make a few more wraps. This back piece should be relatively thin and lay back all the way more or less. When you've done this, take a fancy comb like this and blend the fibers together. Moving on, grab two of the thinnest olive colored pieces. We'll get thicker as we go. Here's our first proper high tie. Do the exact same thing you did with the tail section. Just wrap back and perhaps a little forward and then pull the front section back. I like to just pinch this front section so that it goes back but also a little up. Now we'll tie in our first low tie. You can do this a few different ways, but with this pattern, I wrap the fiber around the thread and pull it up. I make a few wraps first, but then I position the hook point in the middle of the fibers. After this, I pinch the fibers and make a few wraps forward for the next series of fibers. Grab two more of the thinnest fibers for the next high and low ties. We're going to be repeating this process quite a few times and you'll get pretty fast at this. Just make sure to pinch the fibers to point them up a bit. Attach the bottom fibers now. I approach this pattern in three sets of two highs and two lows. This is the first set. Okay, so here is our first mid tie with one set of fibers. Attach these just like you did on the low tie, but do it on the side. Do it for both sides, but make sure these are very thin, otherwise you might lose your flat bluegill shape and get more of a sausage. Don't forget, this ratio and these steps are for this specific tie. Experiment for yourself to see what you like. Now you can blend these together with a combing or two. After each mid tie, I add flash. This flash is wing and flash and is very thin. I tie it right in the middle and try to get it around the entire hook shank. Then I fold the front part back so that it shoots out the back as well. After this, tie the flash back, but don't wrap over the Pugliese fibers at all. Then you can spruce the fly a bit and give it a little combing. 
moving into phase two. Grab two more olive beauties. You're going to repeat the steps that you just did now. The repetition will turn you into a Pugliese master, much like with Daniel LaRusso painting the fence. Remember, you don't want the pieces too close together since they'll spread out when you comb them. Now, two more pieces. Here we are again. While I'm tying these down, keep in mind that you can tie these as sparse as you want. You can also tie this pattern as far back on the shank as you want, and this technique really works with weedless flies. Make sure to pinch that fiber, just a little pinch. Alright, now here are some more mid-ties. For these ties, make sure to tie them down very flush. After phase two, we'll add two colors of flash. First color is a pearl color. You're going to add both colors in the same way that you tied in the first clump of flash, which makes sense. Tie it in and then tie it back. On the second one, we use a copper or brown color. Tie it in and disperse it around the shank, but once again, make sure not to tie over the EP material. I like to blend things together after the flash. Don't worry if some of the flash pulls out since this material is rather breakable. Okay, so pay attention here. Grab an olive and a tan colored piece now. Tie in your first olive piece. With this piece, I prop it up a bit with a wedge, much like with reverse tying. It's not always necessary, so play it by ear. Now you'll tie in the tan piece. The reason for tan is because it's a common color for other patterns, and it provides a good background for the markers later. Just pinch it. Okay, last two pieces for high lows. You're a pro by now, but try to make the fibers go up with a very small but tight pinch. The GSP thread really works well here. Now your final low tie. You know what to do with it. Pinch it good. Just two more pieces for the mid-ties. Just think flat with these mid-ties. Use your brush or comb to blend the fibers a bit. When it's to your liking, whip finish the GSP. Now you can finish the head with a different thread like UTC since it doesn't slip as much. Also you can finish the fly much further back or right up to the eye. It's up to you. The more hook that you leave exposed, the more your fly will bob up and down in a sinking motion on the paws. 
Okay, to finish the tying portion, I add some more flash. Tie this in just like you did with the mid ties. I used the medium brown color I used before. Just wrap it around the thread and tie it in tightly. After you've tied in the flash, add some more wraps and finish the head of the fly. Your tying is done. Give the fly a few compulsory combs. At this point, you can finish the fly with some head cement or zappa gap. I use zappa gap, of course. Just distribute the liquid around and then set the fly to the side or leave it in your vise to dry. Now go wild with your combing. Take the fly out of the vise and comb the fly as straight back as possible. Work on the bottom of the fly as well and build up the flatness of the fly on the sides. Now let's get the fly looking more fish-like. Start by making four or five stripes on the fly with a permanent marker. Do this before you cut the fibers at all. Do it on one side and repeat it on the other. You can also touch these up with dabs when the fly is cut. After this, comb the fly out again. To cut the fly, I use a template which I adjust to the hook eye and hook point. Once I have the fly adjusted to the eye, I feel for the bottom of the template against the hook point. At this point, no pun intended, I pinch the template against the hook shank. Then I begin cutting from the front of the fly. Use curved or straight scissors, whatever works for you. After I've cut the top, I don't usually use the template anymore. I just use the hook point to guide my cutting toward the point I created on the top cut, but you can use the template if it helps you out. Here's our finished fly after a few touch-up cuts. I personally don't use doll eyes because of their price and weight. I use stick-on eyes. Dab some glue over the flash. Then set an eye on the glue with your bodkin. If you have two bodkins, this can help out a bunch. Place the eye down and use your finger or another bodkin to keep the eye in place. Your finger will sometimes stick like it does here, so use a bodkin to help you out. Now press evenly on the eye with your bodkin and then release your pressure. Now use a black marker to make a little dot or line behind the eye. Then grab your orange marker and make a bunch of dots over the tan. On top of the orange dots, add some yellow dots to even out the color. And do all of these steps on both sides, of course. When you're done, your fly should have some nice flash to its body like this. Use this fly to help you tie similar patterns, and see the article from the link above and below for fishing suggestions. Thanks again.